Um, so I'm going to turn the, uh, the slides over to Dr. Cellini. He's going to present the case for you guys. All right. So we're going to present a case of prostatic artery embolization, as you know. So this uh, chief complaint here of LUTs, lower, lower urinary tract symptoms, secondary to BPH. 74-year-old with 20-year history of BPH, which, is, which has been managed well with finasteride. Until the past year, when he started seeing a new urologist that recommended he stop finasteride due to increased cancer risk. He then switched to doxazosin uh, by a new urologist. He also has a history of uh, erectile dysfunction, which he takes to Dalafil without any improvement. His LUTs include incomplete emptying, increased urinary frequency in nocturia about two to four times a night, and weak stream. He's seeking a minimally evasive approach to his BPH symptoms. His past medical history and surgical history of Peyronie's disease and abdominal herniorphy times three. Next slide. His PSA was 10.2, status post negative biopsy in 2019. Uh, in office, the Euroflow measured his urinary stream at 3.6 milliliters a second with severe hesitancy and intermittency. His IPSS score of 16, QL 5, and IPP grade 3, which is greater than 10 millimeters into the bladder. So the treatment options for him include medical management, PAE, of course, transurethral microwave uh, thermotherapy, my favorite, transurethral needle ablation or tuna, and homium <laughs> laser enucleation of the prostate, uh, and of course, prostatectomy. So we have our CD recon done by our astute uh, PGY3 IR resident over here, Mr. Carlin, <laughs> Dr. Carlin. So he did a nice recon. Here you can see how large the prostate here is in blue. It almost looks like the bladder in this picture, but it measures 248 cc's and on the right as well. Next slide. And here we have another recon done by Dr. Carlin. Uh, this is the origin of the uh, right side of the hypogastric and the prostatic artery, which it looks like a type 2 in this case. All right. So uh, we've got access with a five, four, five slender sheath. Uh, and then we came down. You guys can see the floral feet. We came down the arch with a... Uh, an aqua vert, four French vert, which is 125 centimeters and a Benson wire. Um, you guys can see the, the anatomy here. And this is actually a pretty tricky iliac anatomy. It took us a you know, few minutes to actually get into that internal iliac on the right side. Um, but we were able to do that uh, with a glide wire. And this was our first angio. And you guys can match that up with what we saw in the pre-CTA. So I do a CTA in pretty much every case uh, for several reasons. I think we talk, I know someone was talking in the previous case about planning, and I think this is a key part of planning for our, uh, for our prostate embolizations to find out exactly what we're going to be dealing with. So this is a 2.0 uh, Terumo Prograte microcatheter with a 016 fathom wire, okay? Um, we are going to sort of just, oh, it looks like we're pretty deep into the vessel already. So we're going to sort of stop here. We're going to take our wire out, and we're going to do a quick uh, little angio. a little Sorry, harder there. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty big. I don't know if Aaron heard you. Yeah, it's very tortuous and we're we're basically hubbed. Uh, I'm using I'm using 200 hydroprol rule. Okay. <laughs> These are there 200 hydroprols. These are the Terumo hydroprols, 200 microns. Aaron, uh, do you use cone beam CT and embo guide routinely? I am or? not using uh, embo guide or cone beam CT in cases like this. I'm going to echo what I'm you said, Rahul. We use cone beam CT in problem-solving cases. We don't necessarily use it in every single case. Um, that's just been my philosophy recently, but I think cone beam CT is a very, very useful tool, um, as the panel has, has accurately described. But I think in a case like this, it's probably not necessary. I typically will give nitro before we embolize. We sometimes will even give verapamil. Uh, there are some cases where I think we can use verapamil to get the vessels or the collateral vessels to, to change, but we didn't really see any here. Um, I, I'm sorry that we didn't get a chance to discuss the, uh, the images, but this is a big prostatic artery, as you guys can see. So we're just embolizing, um, and we're almost done with a complete vial of particles on this one side. Wow. Impressive. Hey, Rahul, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Um, I don't do PAE, but I'm curious, is there any literature or any experience in intraarterial lidocaine injection to reduce pain afterwards? Because we do that routinely for UFI, and it's very helpful. Do any of the panelists do that? No. Um, there, 
we don't see a lot of post post procedural pain. We see a lot of the dysuria and burning, um, hesitancy. We're starting to actually see a collateral here. You guys can see that very, um, very subtly on the monitor here. So we're going to take a one X as we inject. Sometimes that helps to sort of uh, get a sense of what we're dealing with. But this is actually that's probably not not a. Actually, maybe it is a collateral. Prostate. Yeah. What I will tell you is that we're going to probably put a coil in this artery uh, at the end of the procedure. And I know that we, we've talked about this in the past, but this is just something that we've been doing and we've been studying this for, for a little while now. We've had really good results um, in terms of repeat procedures and, or not having a repeat procedure and um, uh, potentially decreasing the recurrence rate. Yeah. All right. So that was a two millimeter. Size. That was a two millimeter CX coil for. Laid down really nice. Yeah, laid down pretty nicely. And you know, <laughs> it has an electrolytic detachment. There, we call it the pickle. That's good. <laughs> sorry, it's four the, uh... millimeters, Rahul. Four millimeters. Oh, four millimeter. Four millimeter. Four millimeter CX. Sorry. You guys can zoom in on the on the detacher for us. You guys can see that. Well, we're actually almost done, but let me let me just go back and we'll show you what we're dealing with. <laughs> I sort of want to get everybody's thoughts. So we did coil that artery on the other side. We'll we'll talk about that in a second. You guys can see that's hub. That's the 125 vert, and so we're just into the origin. And 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 this patient's not super tall, so this is one of the limitations, obviously. But we have longer catheters now. If we really wanted to uh, to go and use like a 130, uh, potentially even a 150, now that we have the true select, we can use a 175. Microcatheter. So we have a few more options in terms of length. So the, we, we think this is a type four origin. We were sort of unsure on the on the CT. So this is this just sort of confirmed it for us. And you guys can see it on the screen there. Um, and then basically we took the prograde 2.0, the alpha, as Rahul was talking about, and we just probed around that origin. We we got down into that trunk there, and we saw it. And so we went into it. Uh, it took a few minutes to get in. Uh, we used a uh, just a regular fathom wire, fathom 16. It's sort of a smaller vessel than the other side. The other side was like a Eufy, right? It was a hose. Um, and we used almost a full vial, maybe three quarters of a vial on the right. This was interesting. So we gave a little bit of nitro here, um, as, as Francisco was talking about. And then we did, a, we did a very slow injection to try to figure out exactly what those branches are. I think some of those initial branches were probably going posteriorly to the rectum. I think everybody on the panel can weigh in and tell me if they agree. And so we pushed the microcatheter a little bit further in to about here, and we did two views. I know Francisco loves two views, right? We did a oblique and we did a cranial caudal AP, and we see a lot of pl prostate blush on that image, and so that's where we're embolizing from. So I usually use about the same size particle, but I, I, I do like the concept of upsizing. These are, this is my favorite size right now, but I go back and forth about what I like to use. I think this size, the 200 micron hydropearl, sort of fits into all the categories that I want to uh, achieve with these embolizations. I want, it, I want a little bit more distal penetration, but I don't really like the 100 uh, size anymore. I think that you get a little bit too much uh, post-operative side effect uh, for the first few days. And so I, I, I sort of like these, but I could upsize them potentially to a 400. And I know, you know, there's really no, no data supporting that smaller sizes are better, at least between the one to threes and the three to fives. Um, and, and you know that very well, Francisco. But I think uh, I think in this case, it's relatively straightforward. I'm going to go ahead and finish this vessel, and then maybe we'll do a repeat angio on this side uh, to see if there's any, another branch feeding it, like the posterior lateral needs more embo. I look for three to five bead stasis, but remember, if you, you may get reflux before Sorry. you get stasis, and you may Sorry. actually get collaterals uh, pudendal collaterals that are forming, or not not forming, but that are that are opacifying before you get to that endpoint. So I think the endpoint is really one of those things. Whether you see too much reflux, or you see um, collaterals, or you have stasis. So one of those three, and that, that's that's generally how you know. I'm very vigilant about watching. I think some people, when they do these embos, not necessarily prostate, but maybe UFI intermittently fluoro. But I do a I fluoro constantly. And I sort of save all my floral time for this part. I try to minimize my floral time um, before. But um, our 
our floral times have been very good as of late with these with these uh, new uh, dose minimization platforms that we have, and so we're really not having any issue with dose. I know that's a big criticism for some of these uh, these embos. Um, we're starting to get a little reflux. So to answer your question, we're probably close to being uh, to being done with this spot, and then we're going to do a little perfected here. We go a little more distal. Um, okay. We're going to go real slow here when we do the DSA. All right, let's go real slow. About as slow as we can go. Really slow with the three. This is a three cc syringe. I like the way that looks, but I still think we can go more distal. You can see that branch going down at the bottom that could probably. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me see that wire. Here you go. Let's see if we can get a little further in. So we have a little bit of a, you know, we're, our, our catheter is getting close to the end here. Yeah. But and you're starting to I lose the torque can, in your wire as still, well? I mean. No, I have pretty good torque. It's just, I think that it's going to be hard right. for me to actually find that origin unless I do a different oblique. And you can see the real benefit of perfected here because we're actually getting a, a lot more distal penetration to that bottom branch. And I'm going to take a 1x here just so you guys can see. But you can see that the, the the lower part of the gland, uh, maybe not so much the median lobe, um, is filling pretty dramatically here. I 100% agree. I think um, you can look at it Symbolic. both ways because if you take out that branch completely, then it won't be a source of recurrence potentially, at least through the main artery. You, well, you will see it through the collaterals. Um, and so that may be the posterior lateral branch, it may be the pudendal branch, it could be the superior vesicular branch. Any of those three are probably the most common in my experience. But our recurrence rates have dropped a little bit since we started doing this. And so I, I'm hopeful that the data that we present this year at SIR hopefully will uh, will, will show that. Uh, that's okay. I mean, we're yeah. just embolizing. We're getting a great embolization on this side. And we talked about endpoints. We're basically at that endpoint now. Um, we're pretty distal. I mean, we could probably go a little bit more distal, but I think we're filling up that bottom uh, segment of this artery very well uh, with not very much reflux. And this catheter is performing really well. We've, this is our you know, second side with the catheter. No issues, no kinks, nothing. Um, so I'm pretty happy. I'm just going to show you guys a quick 1x of the stain. Sometimes what I'll do at the end is I'll do a cone beam CT of the entire gland. Uh, but what you typically see is only the ipsilateral side that you just embolized unless you're using a radio opaque bead, um, which we're not. Uh, we're using the 200 hydroprols, as I mentioned. Contrast. So um, we're going to drop a coil here, actually. Um, you can go ahead to go to room two. We're, we're just going to finish this, and then we're basically done. We're going to put the TR band on, and we're going to get out of here. All right. Sounds good.